I've got I've only got four points today. I'm becoming a point preacher. Now my first point may have three sub points underneath it, but I've only got four points. And I'm probably going to spend most of my time on my first one, so when I get through that one, you can say, whew, he's about done. But this morning, Brother Dennis, I'm here. I believe God has has placed me here as pastor of this church and the burden that he has for me. Yeah, I want to see the lost saved. And I felt felt the draw this morning. I don't know who you was, but I don't know about the church. I felt the draw that someone, I want to see, Brother Johnny, those lost get saved but once we get them saved, and once you guys have been saved for years, how do we, how do we keep joy and peace? And ha- how do we keep the love of God flowing through us where we don't fly off the handle every time something goes wrong or we don't just go away and we're not in church for a month because things just ain't quite. I want to I help us learn how to do that. And I've learned in the Word of God, it, Brother Dennis, a lot of things that we have in our lives because we spoke it out of our mouth. A lot of things you're going through today is because you spoke it last week or the year before. You spoke it into existence today. You spoke death over your relationship. You spoke death over your finances. You spoke death over your kids. You've cursed your kids. Man, I'll get to it in a minute. But we praise God out of one side of our mouth and we curse somebody out of the other. The Bible says that shouldn't be. James says that shouldn't be that way. But man, as Christians, we do that. Hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I love you, man. I can't stand that guy right over there. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. Can't believe they're... In the middle of... How many members chasing them? It's been years ago. And I don't even remember exactly what they was doing, but there was four or five of them up here, and they was praising God, but it was something about McDonald's and a Happy Meal. and a, You know, we're praising God, but our minds... That's what we do. Hallelujah, praise God, I can't stand him. What's he doing here this morning? I thought he went to that other church. James says that shouldn't be. James says that should not be. I'm getting ahead of myself, Brother Lawrence. That was three or four points. That's my third or fourth point. I better slow down. No, I never got to number one yet. Anybody besides me been challenged over the last two or three weeks? You'll be real and be honest with God and say, God, you've challenged me that uh, what I'm saying and what I'm speaking. Go with me this morning to James, third chapter. You should have already known where I was going. The third chapter of James. And I'm going to try to not be fast, but I'm going to try to be. It's. Hallelujah. It'll be, it'll be good. It's going to be good. How many understands and knows that a chameleon's tongue is twice the length of its body? The title of my message this morning is The Amazing Facts About the Terrible Tongue. So I told you this morning, God's here after your tongue this morning. Not your feet, Dennis, your tongue. Sorry. The tongue of a blue whale weighs more than the average elephant. The tongue of a blue whale, look, look it up, David Jones got that look on his face. The tongue of a blue whale, according to the, according to the it's, it weighs 6,000 pounds. Now what's 99 times 2? Would that be a, a 18 million? That's how much a, a whale weighs. So in accordance to the size of the whale, that's not very big. And did you know your tongue is your, the biggest muscle in your body? Why? Because we use it so much. We blab at it. I, I, I don't believe everything I read. Do you believe everything you read? So when I say this, I'm not 100% sure that I believe it, but I just read it. But it says your tongue really never quits at night either. It just, it's constantly pushing saliva down your mouth. Now, I don't know if I believe that or not, but that's, that's what it said. And I'll just give you that fact. You can research it and tell me I was wrong because I don't know for sure. I just read it. and I, mm. I even looked again this morning thinking, is that true? And I never could no one else find me that so but this morning, it's amazing when we talk about the tongue. At James, when you read the book of James, he talks more about the tongue probably than anybody else. You'll find more in James about the tongue, I believe, than you will anywhere else. So go with me to the third chapter of James. And I'm going to read the first 12 verses. And then I'll come back and we'll get 
in, into each one of them a little better. It says, My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. Can I say it this way? My brethren, you don't want to be a teacher. For in many things we are offending all. If any man offend, listen to this one here. You need to listen to this statement. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able also to bridle the whole body. I'll come back. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the ships which though they be so great and, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, wherewith soever the governor list. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasts great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindles. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind beast and every birds and serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue no man can tame. We can tame everything else, all the kind, the beasts, the wild animals there are. But James says, but the tongue you can't tame. It is an unruly evil, fully and full of deadly poison. Therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith we curse we men, which are made after the similitude or the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not be so. Does a fountain send forth the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a, a vine figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. James spent 12 verses talking about a member of our body that is disproportionately I'll get my first point here. Powerful. Point number one. Our tongue is disproportionately powerful. Say, what's well, disproportionate? It's, 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 it's out of size. It's, it's not according to the size of what it is. Look at your fist. I told you to do this. Last. Compared to your tongue, you think you could do more damage with your fist. But the Bible tells me the tongue, Brother Bobby, is disproportionately powerful. I'm going to, again, I'm going to go back at verse 1 and 2. It says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing we shall receive a stricter judgment, for we all stumble in many things. If anybody does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able to bridle the whole body. I want, I want to focus. Uh, first off, I had a brother in the church, Brother Randy, uh, two, three, four, five, six months after I become pastor. He came up to me about right there where Brother Johnny is. He said, Pastor... Is there a website or some studies you could point me to to where I can become a pastor? I'm not James, but I'm going to tell you what James said. I said, uh, did God call you to do that? No, I just think I want to be a pastor. I said, go, run. Don't he? James says you're going to be judged differently. It's better. He don't want a lot of us to be teachers. And Why? Because we use our mouth. And let's be human. Or let's be real, I'm human. I'm, I'm going to say something once in a while. And that's that, and we're, Brother Dave, he said, I'd read, don't you bunch of us go out trying to be teachers and preachers. Don't do that. That's James's. But I want you to look at that, that verse. It's verse 2. It says, for we all have stumbled in many ways. But Jesus, or then James, he emphasizes the and says, if, listen, if anyone does not stumble in word, or he he or she is perfect, able also to bridle his or her whole body. If you don't stumble in word, listen, if you can get your tongue right, that's he's telling us, if you get your tongue right, then you can control your body and your body will be right. That's what James says. That's what James says. By controlling our tongues, 
we can control our body. If you're looking for a perfect diet, don't look no more. Control the tongue. Control the, the, the mind, the thought that comes out of the mind. Control it. If you're looking for that, if you have a problem with addiction, here's your answer. If you struggle with lust, all you need is control. Because James says if you can control that tongue, you can control the whole body. James tells us that the tongue is disproportionately powerful. And what does that mean? It's out of, from the size of our body. It's one of the smallest members of our body, but it's so powerful. Brother Bobby, disproportionately is an adverb that describes powerful. It adds to powerful. So we could just say it's powerful, but it's disproportionate. To the size of it, it's disproportionate. It's powerful. Then he goes into subpoint number one. And he talked to us as our tongue is like a bridle that controls a horse. Now I got me a, I need a horse. Who wants to be my horse this morning? The bit. How many, how many cowboys, cowgirls do I have in here? Been on horses, been around horses a whole lot. For the instant, get some big old horses. Thousands, 1,500 pound horses. And James compares our tongue to a bit of a bridle. We put that bit in that horse's mouth, Brother David, and we can control the direction. We can control. You can get it in a minute. You can control the direction and the strength of that horse. Horse is disproportionately powerful. According to the size of that horse, that bit, this bridle should not hold that horse. But you put that thing in its mouth, Brother Randy, and you can make it do just about anything you want it to do. How? It's like our tongue. It's disproportionately powerful. To the size of the horse, it's, it's bad. But listen what I said. You can put this in its mouth, and you can control the horse's strength and its direction. Think about it this way. This thing right up here controls our strength in our direction. He compared it as a bit to a horse. So if, if the bit controls that horse's strength and direction, our tongue is controlling our strength and our direction. Brother Bobby, if you're going in the wrong direction, maybe you're talking the wrong direction. If you're saying things contrary to what the Word of God says and you're going the wrong direction, the bit, the tongue, is steering our direction in that, in that way. If you don't have strength to meet the demands of your life, the directions that we're speaking, the words that we're speaking with our tongue are leading us into weakness. The bit that controls a 1,000-pound a horse, Brother Brad, this little bitty piece of metal, that's like our tongue. It's, dispropor- it's out of size. It's out of size. James 1 and 26 says, if anyone among you think he's religious, now I'm not talking about having a, this, you break this meaning down here, it's not talking about a religious spirit it's like the fairy. This is actually talking about being a servant of God. This word religious here is talking about if anybody thinks you're a servant of God, being religious and, having to, having, and wanting to please God, and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his own heart, this one religion is useless. You're trying to serve God. You love him. And you can't bridle your tongue and you're talking out of that side. He just told us your religion is useless. It's useless. It's useless. Is it possible that as Christians... That there are Christians who are spending lots of time and energy working for God, but because they don't control their tongue, they're really useless in God's eyes. James said, if you can't control that thing, you're just useless. I'm just telling you what the Word of God says. Are we wandering aimlessly like an unbridled horse? I mean, I, I mean... I mean, I've seen on TV, and I've never seen a, a bunch of wild stallions, Brother Johnny, but I've seen them on TV, and they just kind of want—they just kind of wander. 
And they just kind of roam, and they don't, they, they don't have no direction. They free-spirited. They just kind of, you ever felt that way? Like you're, just, you're not controlling that thing, Brother Dennis. They have nothing inside of them. They have no direction. They have no place to go to. And that's where you and I are sometimes with our words. We begin to spit things out, and it sends us out, and we go in, in every direction. It, it, it se- we seem like we're useless. Our tongue is so powerful that it can help us achieve God's plan and purpose for our lives or they can keep us running aimlessly about accomplishing little to nothing. The bridle, the bit, your tongue controls your direction and your strength. What are you speaking? Are you speaking life or are you speaking death? James 3, 4, and 5 says this. Says, Look also, this is sub point B. Look also at ships, though they are large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned in by very small rudders wherever the, the, the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. I was, me and Kim, and, and I, I'm in hearing that maybe the week of November we may have to close church because there's a bunch of the, y'all going on a cruise. A bunch of you going on the cruise at the same time. No, you are going on a cruise. But, Brother Dennis, we went on our cruise, and, and we, I walked up to this ship, Brother Randy. If you've never been on a cruise, I had never been on a cruise. I've been in some boats, some bass boats and pontoon boats. And, but this thing was just humongous. I mean, it was humongous. It had nine, I think, not, no, 11 floors, I think, to it. Nine of them was rooms and all that, and then they had some game stuff up there. But it, it was just huge, monstrous. It was, it was unreal. Never seen anything like it in my life. You just walk up, and it's this great big old thing. You, they, we watched them. Uh, they had side doors on it, Brother Mike, that they let down on the side of the boat, and they were forklifting food into these ships on the side of the boat. It was just huge. But yet that ship, Brother Dennis, was led by a rudder. Listen to the size of the Titanic. The Titanic. It was 882 feet long and stood 11 stories high. Let me give you a little bit of picture of what that 882. Let's round it up to 900. And it, this, this sanctuary is 100 feet long. So it's nine times as long as this sanctuary. Nine times as long as this sanctuary. 11 stories high. So how's the Hilton over here, where, where I'm at? Huge. But yet, listen to the rudder. It was only 70 feet long. 78 to be exact, it says. 78 feet. A 78-foot rudder steered that 900-foot long, 11-story high ship. Yet he tells us of our tongue. It's like a rudder of a ship. It's like the rudder of a ship. How powerful a small rudder can be. How important do you think the rudder of a ship is during the weather, during foul weather? The captain knows if foul weather's coming, you got to get that ship put it, pointed in the right direction. I wish you'd catch these before I'd have to say them. In the middle of your bad weather, if your rudder is not pointed in the right direction, he knows if he don't get that ship going in the right direction in the storm, it's going to go down. It's going gonna, it's gonna to fl- it's gonna crash. It's going to go under. Can I tell you today, if our rudders don't get us in the right direction in the middle of our storm, we're going to go down, we're going to go under. Brother Billy, if you're sick and you're and going through uh, all this, Brother Lawrence losing mom and dad, if you don't stay in the middle, focus on what you're doing, you're going to go down and you're going to go under. The devil doesn't want you to know if you speak, God's going to help you and going to help hear you and help you through it. But in the middle of your storm, he knows if he don't turn that ship in the right direction that it's going to capsize and it'll sink. And that's the way you, you and I are in our life. We must carry, we must meet our crisis head on. Speak the word of God. Not verbally fretting about the, the, the worst case scenario. Maybe one reason you may have be capsized during one of your life storms is because your mouth maybe led you in the wrong direction. How many knows a, if you don't have a, a, a sail? How many, I've never sailboated, Brother Lawrence, but sailboat goes by just winds. And they, they, they move them sails to change. Don't have a rudder on it. Picture yourself, you, brother, brother J.R., you're out on a, on a nice, cool, wind, uh, calm day, and you're on the, on the lake, and you see a place that you want to head to, and you, you start going over that direction. 
and you ain't got a rudder. Life's going along good, but you ain't got a rudder. There's no storm out there. And you're going, and all of a sudden, you, boy, I'd like to stop right here. But you don't have nothing to take you over, and, they, and you just carry your way. And if you're not careful, even in your good times, you've got to have a rudder. You've got to have control of your rudder. Even when things are going good for you, you've got to have control. You've got to be able to take control of your tongue, your rudder. You've got to take control of it. In the storm, the ship has to be uh, pointed in the right direction, or the ship will capsize. Ephesians 4, 14, so Paul tells us the immature believers are people who are blown away about the every wind of doctrine. In a similar way, people who can't control their tongue, who can't control their tongue, can't control their lives. If you're going in the wrong directions, it's maybe it's because your rudder, your tongue has turned you the wrong way. Listen, what you say today will steer you towards your tomorrow. And you need to write that down. God's got a destiny for each one of us. The Bible says that the footsteps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. What you say today, what you say today will point you towards your tomorrow. The rudder, my page turned, I'm sorry. What you say today will steer you towards your tomorrow. Your destiny is in your words. Your destiny is in your words. B, C. It said it's a spark. It said it's a spark. The tongue is a spark. James 3, 5, 5 and 6. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a force and a little kindle fires? And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets a fire of the course of nature. How many's ever, I, I've, I've been on some trips and been down the interstates, Brother Dave, and you've been driving along there nice. I mean, it's, it's kind of dry outside and everything looks good, but all of a sudden you run up and it starts, the side's just been burnt. The roads all around you just been burnt. I, we, we came through. Memphis or somewhere, and, and it had caught the forest on the, the side of the road, and just dead trees, they would just burn all together. Why? Because someone carelessly flipped something out the window. That's what he's talking about when he's talking about the, your tongue being a fire. We flip little things out, and we think it doesn't matter, but I told you in two or three weeks ago, the reason it can cause a forest fire is maybe because, Brother Dennis, someone's already said the same thing to that person a half a dozen times, and you said the last thing, and it said it set the whole thing on fire. Your tongue... And I'm telling you, there's some evil things in these tongues. There's evil things in these tongues, but it says your tongue is a spark. It's disproportionately powerful. It, it, it talks about our rudder, our bit, but it's also a spark. The reason it starts a fire is maybe because what you said by, to somebody has already been said, and it just sets that whole thing on fire. It sets a spark. Disproportionately powerful. Number two. The tongue is inherently evil. You say, Pastor, what are you talking about? You were born with it. And the Bible says we were born sinners. We were, Brother Dick, Bob, I bet you a hundred, well, I ain't going to bet you. You didn't have to teach Carmen how to lie when she was a baby. You don't have to teach these little ones how to do things wrong. Why? Because it's inherited. We were born that way. We were born to, to tell things that shouldn't be. You have to teach them what's right and what's wrong. You don't have to teach them what's wrong. They are, it's already in us, Brother Tyler. We were born that way. Our tongue was born to speak. Let's go back, let's go back a few years for some of us. How many members in, in junior high? That was some of the worst years for some of us. And maybe, maybe you, I was always real quiet, a little short, and a little stubby, if you know what I'm saying. Maybe you're one of those who was tall and real skinny. Maybe you wore glasses. Maybe you wore braces. Or maybe you was one of those that was perfect and you was the one talking about all of us that had the little faults. <laughs> Everybody agree with what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? Brother Dennis, if you wasn't the one getting talked about, you was the one doing the talking. That's something that's in us. We don't have to be taught. To, we don't have to be taught to do that. We got to be taught to say the good things. We got to be taught to say what's right and what's wrong. 
Robert Morris, he, he said that he was always real skinny. And these were, these were some of his skinny jokes, he said. He said, if you turn sideways and stick your tongue out, you'd look like a zipper. A little slow, but you got it. He said, you're so skinny you could cool off in the shade of a clothesline. But that's the way we are. That's the way. We don't have to be taught, Sister T, how to do bad things. And I'm telling you, you don't have to be taught how to not. You, you say things, Brother Dennis, when we shouldn't. It's, it's a nature. It's inside of us. It's, we were born that way. We were born, Brother Bobby, to be, to, we got to know Jesus, and then he takes over. Man, we're going to get into how to control our tongue in the next week or two. And I found out there's only one way, Brother Lawrence. I'll give you a preview. There's only one way that you can control your tongue, and that's surrendering it to God. Letting the Holy Spirit take over. You can't do it on your own. I'll get there in just a minute because the, the number three, the tongue is humanly untamable. It's humanly untamable. Verses 7 and 8. I'm trying to get through this. It said, every kind of beast and bird, the reptile and the creature of the sea, is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man, no woman, no man, no mankind can tame the tongue. It is unruly evil full of deadly poison. Again, it ain't just evil. He said it's unruly Full of evil. We can't humanly contain it. We can't do it on our own, Brother Lawrence. Thank God that it's divinely tameable, though. you got to surrender. you got to surrender yourself. you got to surrender your tongue to the Holy Ghost. you got to surrender yourself to God. Just surrender your tongue to God. Listen to, what, listen to what Moses said in Exodus. You don't have to turn there. Exodus 4, 10 and 12. Write it down, then you can go back and... I thought I had it marked. It says, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither there, hither nor since have you spoken to your servant, but I am slow to speak and of slow to tongue. And the Lord said unto him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes the dumb or the deaf or the seen or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go... And I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall say. The only way we're going to be able to control this thing, because we walk in flesh, is to surrender it to God. The only way that we can take and let, uh, let our tongue be controlled is through the Holy Spirit. It's going to change us. It's going to change us. Listen, we're going to go into Acts in the next couple of weeks. Think, back, think, think with me in, in, in Acts, Brother Lawrence, and it said when the, the, the Spirit fell upon them like what? Cloven tongues. Tongues of fire. What did it change, Brother Dave, on them when it fell on them? It changed their tongue. It said they began to speak. It changed their tongue. The only way you and I can get our tongue in check is to surrender it to God. I promise you, you go say something you shouldn't say, there's going to be a check over here trying to check you from saying it. He's, he's checking us, Sister Donna. Say it, no. Say it, no. And it's up to you and I to allow the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, to keep us in line. And we'll go deeper in that one. That, that one might be a good lesson. That one might be good. But it's inherently evil and it's unhumanly tame. There's no way you and I humanly can, can tame this. And the last one, the tongue is contrastly productive. The Bible says, James says, let me just read it. With it, this is James 3, 9 through 12. With it, our tongue, we bless God our Father. And with it, we curse men who have been made in the similitude or the likeness of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursing. My brethren, I could just see him shaking his finger saying, My brethren, this shouldn't be that way. Does a spring forth, uh, send forth fresh water and bitter? 
for the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives and a grapefruit? Thus, no spring shall yield field salt, or sorry, thus no spring yields both salt water and fresh. It is contrastly positive. It does things that nature can't do. He tells us there's no way, Sister T, that an apple tree is going to produce oranges. But yet our tongue, Brother Dennis, can praise God, can give blessings out of it, but yet out of that same thing, nature can't do this, but out of the same thing, our tongue curses somebody, Brother Bobby. Like I said earlier, we praise God on this side, and we curse that one over there. It's contrastly. The tongue is unnatural. It can do things that nature can't do. That's why he tells you, brother, we, we shouldn't do this. Can I get your attention just for a moment? You shouldn't do that. You shouldn't bless them at their face and behind their back you're cursing them. You say, Pastor, well, I'm, I'm talking, I know what I'm talking about. The church, we are some of the worst to talk about our brothers and sisters. And James says that oughtn't be. Brother Lawrence, it's you shouldn't produce that way. You shouldn't produce that way. Our tongue is contrastically productive. It does both different things. Brother Dave, we talked a lot about the tongue, and I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. We talked a lot about the tongue and, and the word and the bad stuff. But can I tell you, the, the, there is also life that comes out of this. The good thing is life comes out of your tongue. I'm going to sound... I'm going to start sounding a little funny to some of you guys because I'm, Brother Roy's not able to be here this morning. But he, he never says anything, but I'm blessed. You ask him how you are. Don't be surprised if you... Now, now, uh, don't get me wrong. Let me, let me, let me, let me uh, explain this to you real quick. I got an email this week from last week because I had, had a, a, one of our church members come in confidence and talk to me, and that's what I'm here for. Through my preaching last week, the enemy made her feel like she was gossiping to me because she was telling me about her problems. That's not what I'm getting at. I Did I not tell you that the church needs to be the safest place that you and I can come to? You have to have. So if you went away thinking that, that's not what I'm talking about. I told her it's up to me to not go gossip to you with things that she's told me. So that, that's not what I'm getting at here, but I'm telling you, I'm going to start. When you start coming up, and, and I've heard your story before, I'm going to start just speaking the other way around. I'm going to start speaking life to you, Brother Mitchell. I, I know you're on crutches, and I know your foot hurts, but I'm believing and speaking that you're healed in the name of Jesus. I know you're struggling with your finances, and I've heard it before, but I'm believing that your finances are coming, and in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking life into your finances. You and I have got to start speaking to each other. Again, don't find somebody that's down and just start piling on them. Brother Lawrence, I told you two or three weeks ago, if your husband and your wife, all they can do is get out of bed, you, you make them the best getter-upper you've ever known. You, you, just, you just begin to brag on them. And my wife brags on me. I don't know about you guys. and She, she brags on me. I'm, I, I'm doing awesome. You, 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 you look good today. Brag on your spouse. Brag. Speak life into people. Brother Mark, I, I, I speak life, and I speak that God would help you, and you've put it on Facebook, so that's out there, so I'm not going to embarrass you, but he's in the process. No, he, he has quit smoking. He's not in the process. He has quit smoking. I don't need to go up to Brother Mark and say, man, it took me four years to get over mine. It, I struggled that long. To, that's not me. I didn't smoke, but I'm just... You know, you don't, don't go up to him and say, man, it took me six months, brother. Dave. Then the cravings went away. You go up to him, man, you, boy, you're doing great. Man, you've got this. You can do this. God's with you. God, I know God's going to take you through. You're going to make this. You can do this. But that's what I'm talking about. Speak that life into him. Don't go around him and say, man, it, you know, it just didn't work for me. 
Say, God, you, you speak life into these people. God, I speak life into I speak life into mercy and grace. I speak life into our tithes that we took up this, our offerings we took up this. Not only is it going, it, it's going to come back. The Bible says, press down, shaking together, running over. It's going to come back to this church because God is going to bless you. I speak that God's prosperity, it, uh, not in, in our physical body. He said he would that we'd prosper even as our soul prospers. Can I tell you what makes your soul prosper? Getting in the word of God. Listen to what God's saying. Learn of him. Seek him. Search him. So as your soul prospers through these teachings, I believe in our, our, our we're going to prosper ourselves. Our finances are going to prosper. Yes. Yes. Brother Bobby, I believe when you go through. Is it okay if I say what? Because we need to pray for you. We need to. We, he's, he's doing an awesome thing. And, and, I, and I applaud those that have done this. And Brother Bobby's going, is it next week? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. So I told you, we got to pray for him. He's going next week and he's having surgery. And he, he's, he's having a gastric bypass surgery. He's going to help him to lose. And that, that is awesome. I'm telling you, that is awesome. But I speak that God is going to get you. He's going to take you, Brother Bobby, and you're going to recover quicker than anybody else has ever recovered. You're going to lose it quicker than anybody else. I, I, that's what I'm talking. I can choose to tell Bobby, man. I've seen Sister Anna, you know, compared to No. I believe that God's going to take him and, and I'm going to speak life into his body. He's got about two weeks to get back because we got Easter Sunday morning. So he's got to get back quick. <laughs> but why can't you do that? Why can't you tell somebody? the good in them and not the bad. Focus on what good they are. I talked to Salitha the other day, and, and I know she's struggling, but, but what we got to do, we got to encourage her to press on. You know, listen to her. Somebody needs somebody. Some, Brother Lawrence, you, you, talk, you, you need somebody to say, hey, this is, listen, but yet don't, don't say, boy, that's, you know, speak life into them. Speak life into this body. Speak life into them. Speak life into them. Anybody like to have some life? Anybody like to have some blessing? Anybody like to have all that God has for you? I do. And I'm going to start believing it and speaking it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him a hand of praise this morning. Speak life. Speak life. Let me tell you this, and then I'm going to close, and then we're going to do our baby dedication. Satan cannot hurt you. Let me say it this way. Do you believe that he can't hurt you? If he could, he would have already killed you. You say, what are you, what are you talking about? Well, listen, Satan can't hurt you, Brother Bob. You say, how, you, how can you prove that? Well, I can go to Job. And the Bible talks of Job being a perfect, he was just the man. He had it all. The devil didn't like it, so Job had to go to God. He just couldn't do it on his own. He had to go to God and God give him permission to try him. The devil can't hurt you. What he can do, and he's doing this really good, is to get us to turn our mouth against ourselves and kill ourselves. He's trying to get you every time you speak, you're either going to agree with life and what God says, or you're going to agree with death and what Satan says. Every time you speak, life or death comes out of your tongue. Life or death comes out of your tongue. God bless you this morning. I love him. I, I'm, I'm enjoying this. I don't know about y'all, but I'm enjoying this. Uh, I, we've got... We've got a lot of uh, older saints that attend this church. We got some babes. We got a lot of older saints. And when God began to speak to me to do something like this, Brother Bob, I think, man, well, there's some there's some saints been in Christians for forty years, and, and I'm just telling you, it hits us all. I've been saved for twenty eight years, and I'm reading some things that I thought I've just kind of glanced over it. I didn't I didn't look at exactly what it said, Brother Dave. That James says if you're doing trying to do good and living for love and for God, but yet you're, you're speaking out of your other side of your mouth. You're just being worthless. You're, you're running around aimless. You're not, a, you're not amounting to nothing. 
and I've got to shut up. I know that. But you and I, I want this church. I want us to bless that church right over there. I want us to bless that church right over there. I want us to bless the one over here, the one over here, the one over here. I want us to speak life into them. Man, I, I don't know what they did about six months ago, but they doubled in size. Praise God. Hallelujah. Bless them so they'll turn around and it'll bless us. Hallelujah. Speak life. Speak life. How about your heads this morning. Father, we thank you and we just love you. And God, we want to give you praise for what you've done this morning. Speaking to us, God, in your presence, being so rich, so rich this morning, God. I just want to give you praise. If everyone that's under the sound of our voice this morning, starting from me, God, help me to apply the word that was ministered today that you spoke to us. Help us to apply it to our hearts. Help us to get our mouth and our, our, our thoughts and our thinking and our words in line with what you say, God. Not what I want, but what you want, God. Bless this church. Move in a mighty way.